Hello everyone, in this episode here, uh, it's about my Rad Mini again. Um, it's dirty, I'm going to wash it. Uh, but the reason I'm going to wash it today is not because it's dirty or anything, but also because I'm expecting my full fenders, front, front and rear full fenders. I'm expecting that to come in today, so I want to wash it, make sure it's clean, that way I can apply it on. But let's give it. Let's take a look at how it looks. Uh, well, first of all, let me uh, let me let me change here. Uh, this is something that I added to my rain rain weather gear. Um, these are basically um, neoporn kind of boots, uh, waters or something. Um, let me see here. Give you a look at it here. This is a uh, Magellan and um, I don't know what these are, but uh, uh, they're they're for hunting. But uh, the problem is, like, if you wear like regular high tops, if you wear regular high tops, um, the water still gets in, and so that's the issue that I was having. And so uh, I, with my Tyvek pants, I mean, when I pull them down, this is how they. It's really, really easy to transport them when you do something like this. And so, um, let me put on my, let's put these on, so I don't have to worry about it. And what's nice is they have no laces, it's neoporin, and it fits, and there's enough wiggle room, I can actually just ride my bike. Matter of fact, this is what I wore today, as I rode my bike, wearing this today. Um, it didn't rain, but it was very wet, and I knew it would be wet, because it rained the day before. So I just, more or less, just slip right into them. And then from there, I just, uh... Pull up, uh, pull up the pants. Uh, so, you know, something kind of like this. I have to work on this. This was my makeshift zipper. You can see it's uh, very muddy today. It was very muddy today as I was riding today. Um, so, there you go. Uh, hold on. Let me uh, get back to the bike. All right. So, uh, I got these on now. And uh, I'll do another uh, update on this, on my rainy day gear weather. Um, so, anyways, uh, I'll, I'll save this for another thing. I'm just wearing it because it's really, really muddy out here. Really muddy. It's been raining. And so, I'm going to be washing this. I'm going to get my full fenders ready. And, of course, if you've seen my previous episode, you know I use Rain-X in my bucket. Matter, matter of fact, let me, let me go and get it. There you go. See right here. So, uh, a little bit of this material, Rain-X, I added into the bucket with some soap and water. There's still some soap and, or it looks, yeah, still some soap and water in there. Just add some more water, uh, a little bit more Rain-X. Use this uh, nylon brush to clean up. Uh, so I'll be doing the whole nine yards, cleaning this thing up. All right, so here it is. Uh, man, that is a very bright white all cleaned up rinsed rain next got to do the little tires a little bit more but uh again i'm just getting it ready for my my full fenders my plasti dip however doesn't seem to be working here it just uh it just scrapes off uh so i'm gonna have to figure out something else i'll probably have to do some kind of velcro some kind of velcro over here uh you can see it's, it's you can see it's just literally just scratching scratching the plastic dip so I might have to put some velcro here and here velcro here and here to uh, keep it from scratching anymore but that's when the bike is folded um, anyways I'm gonna go ahead and just wash out the tires really good I want to want I want to keep this clean and washed before uh, the fenders come that way when I install the fenders I don't have to I don't have to wash I don't have to wash as hard uh, the thing, it, it gets very, very dirty so quickly without the uh, full fenders. So, all right, I'll just blow off some compressed air and wait for the uh, full fenders to be delivered. Well, there it is, all dry. Now I'm just going to wait for my full fenders. Let me see, get over here a little bit. I'm going to wait for my full fenders. That's all I'm waiting for. Oh, wow, look at this bike. Clean as a whistle. 
Wow, even the tires are clean. Gotta oil the, uh, gotta lube the chain all the time. Every time I wash it, gotta lube it. But man, that is looking clean. Very clean indeed. Wow. Anyways, uh, take out the battery and we'll be ready to go and I'll clean that up inside there and just wait for the fenders. Uh, another thing is when I'm all done, this is what I like about the boots and the rain suit that I that I pretty much got for my rainy day gear, my rainy day bike gear. So once I'm done, I just simply just slip out of these things and uh, get into my new shoes, my clean shoes. Uh, anyways, so there you go. Um, man, these... Uh, you know, Magellan from Academy, uh, really good buy. They're neoporn. Um, they do keep my, my feet dry, uh, although it is warm, but I'd rather have my feet dry on a very wet and rainy day than, um, than to have them wet. And uh, the nice thing is I get, to, I get to ride, man. I get to ride, and this is kind of the setup here. Anyways. All right, everyone, <laughs> the UPS guy just left. I walked out the door and this was lying in the in the front. I think these are my 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 fenders. I'm pretty sure. And so uh, let's go ahead and uh, oh, excuse me. There's there's the bike. And so let's go ahead and open this up and see what's in the box. I'm sure it's my full fenders. All right, uh, I opened the box and here's what it looks like. Let's get a flashlight here and let's take a look here. That's what it looks like. It came in such a large box. I mean, look at the uh, the size of this box. <laughs> look what's inside. It's not a whole lot. Uh, anyways, um, that's what it looks like. Here are, the, here are the fenders. This is a big zip tie. Here it is. It says uh, Rad Mini Full Fenders. And uh, it looks like it was bent here. But, uh, alright, let me uh, unwrap it and uh, we'll take a better look. Alright, so uh, I uh, unpackaged everything. Uh, I got these screws here. There's, uh, let me see here. There's uh, one, two, three, four with washers and some Loctite on it. Okay, so these are the bolts. So I got four of those. Okay. Well, it makes sense. One, two, three, four. Um, this is most likely the front fender because it, it's small and it has this thing in front of it. Now this is the rear fender and you can see that it's it's much larger compared to you know compared to to the front fender here I'm assuming and uh, the strange thing is it has these holes right here and then it has this which um, I'm not sure what these holes are for and then I got an extra one of these and uh, this is most likely for this part right here I don't know why I have an extra one but I I do okay um, there's no instructions whatsoever here's where it's bent so uh, try to bend it back, but uh, I'll try to make sense of this. Uh, there's nothing. There's nothing here, like the other one. Like uh, it seems like this piece is missing for some reason. It just was never installed, or or maybe I don't. Maybe I don't need one. I'm not sure. But I'll go ahead and I'll try to put it together and we'll try to figure this out. Um, I don't know, is there something missing here? Looks like I'm missing a few screws. Um, I, I'm, I think I'm missing a bolt. Seems like I'm missing a bolt. Uh, I can't... Because I'm pretty sure that there's something that might go right here oh, I don't know this is gonna this is kind of confusing here anyways uh, let me let me try to figure this out uh, I'll definitely put the front one in 
that one makes the most sense um, but the back ones um, I don't know uh, let me try to figure this out I have to take I have to take a look at some pictures all right uh, I had to call rad uh, power bikes um, okay so I when you get the rear when you get the fenders full fenders for the uh, rad mini you get four which is the correct amount um, this piece however I, I don't understand why I got this but you know they don't I, I called the rad power bikes and they said just keep it and I and I said I would keep it as a souvenir so there you go um, so back here back here um, this is supposed to go in here so this is where this goes right here on this side if you can see that Oop. if you can see that uh, the way I got this in is I, I put it down here and then I just I just rolled the bike I just rolled the bike over it and then moved the bike forward again and then sl and slid it and slid it back in um, I, I guess I can show you kind of kind of how I, I did that so if I could I need to remove this piece get this get this sliding back down uh, it's hard to do this one-handed but okay so when you when you when you get this it's it's so tight it you can't you can't get this under here like you see see what I'm saying you, you can't get it under here so so what I had to do was um, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to mess this up here. So, there you go. So, essentially what I had to do, because you, you can't, it's, it's hard to get this in here, but I guess you can do, I guess you can do that, but originally, so, okay, so I got it out. So, when you try to fit it in, when you try to fit it in, it's not that easy to to fit in because it it just isn't that easy so what I did was I just took this and I just rolled the tire in like literally I just took my bike and just just rolled it in rolled it in there we go uh, once you roll it in just and then you roll it in and then it, it can get in here roll it forward so you can get, kind of get it off there we go there we go it's it's in and there we go it's it's in so I just had to I had to slide it out from the bottom here but there you go you can kind of see how it's done it's e so much easier with two hands. Anyways, that's how I got the back end. The front end, really easy. There's a lot of room. It's a smaller fender, but the back is kind of hard. So you have to roll, set it in there, roll the tire over it, then roll the tire out of it, and then slide it forward. Okay, so there's one screw that you reuse. And over here, where the derailleur is, There you go. That's the second screw right here. The second screw that you reuse. And so you haven't used any of these yet. If you do use them, there's. Uh, well, I'll, I'll get back to. Uh, okay, let me, let me try to. I'm, I'm trying to position this. There we go. Okay. All right. So right here. Yeah, all right. Can you see that? Yeah, that, now you can see it. So there are these two holes. So depending which how you fit it, uh, I think for me it's going to be this hole goes underneath here. All right. So you see that, and then finally there's a little hole right here that goes into this hole right here. And so th that's the other two screws that you use. So out of these four, you use that, those for two for those screws, and supposedly these are going to be threaded. Those are threaded, and then finally, 
um, the other screw well okay so this obviously goes in here now the other screw believe it or not is on the bottom right right here there it is so these so uh, these screw the other two remaining screws the other two remaining screws go into these bottom part of the area right here and let me see here there's another one right here there we go another one right here that you uh, attach it to I think it's gonna be on the I'm pretty sure it's probably gonna be on the outside all right but let me go ahead and uh, get this done now that yeah, I had a I need some assistance on this couldn't quite figure this out but let me go ahead and do it and uh, I'll cut back in all right success uh, using the number 10 for the uh, for the uh, back right here and then using this Allen wrench uh, for here I got the front on uh, now I'm just gonna figure out if it needs I wonder if it does need to be in the inside or the outside uh, I'll have to check the threading here I'm pretty sure on the outside because it looks like it's a lot easier to get to if you do it on the outside so let me let me go ahead and do that all right success uh, doing this side right here and the thing about this is that these washers and the lock washer it doesn't go down any further than that so you you just literally have to just put them in this way like literally put it in that way so I got this one done and it is on the outside let me do the other side all right success <laughs> success on this side and uh, looks pretty even looks a little a little a little you just have to move it around just a little bit just to make it even but I think it's I think it I think it works okay so just use this Allen wrench here so these are the three tools I've used so far I probably use this same tool for the back here so let me get hit it on that one okay and again um, I'm using the, the tool kit I'm using the toolkit that was provided for me. That's it. And uh, let me get working on the back. Sorry, it's getting a little dark. Um, so right here is the hole. Unfortunately, what I had to do was I had to remove, uh, remember that tool that I used for slime? I removed the valve and uh, I pretty much let all the air out. You can see it's flat. And uh, that's the, uh, without trying to, without removing the wheel, without removing the wheel um, this is the best way I can do it and I can I can basically um, let me show you I as you see I, I push down on the tire so I push down on the tire right here I push down on the tire and then I can get the tool and the screw in there to screw it I did the middle one first because that's going to be the hardest and then the other one goes here and of course the attachment uh, right here on on this side right here on the other side it's getting kind of dark so I'm trying to do this <laughs> um, so that's probably the best way is just let the air out and then I'll just reinflate the air again and uh, um, hopefully that this will work and there's two holes basically I did the one on the bottom I did the bottom hole not the top hole and that seems to line up that seems to line up the best so hopefully I, I'll get that right all right success uh, there it is if you could kind of see it you probably can't let me try to try to show you right there there it is all screwed in had to really squeeze that tire and do it with two hands um, this is the only way I could think about doing it without uh, actually uh, pulling out the rear wheel so next next one I'm gonna work on is um, let's have a look here if that can you can see that now I'm gonna work on uh, now I'm gonna work on this one right here I don't know if you can see that it's hard to see yeah that's the one I'm gonna work on now and then again there's a little there's a little cutout right there if you can see it I'm sure you can right there and then I'm going to do the same thing 
and uh, after that it should be real easy just put those just uh, replace this one out here and the other one on the other side and uh, put back the uh, uh, the valve and put some air in it and I should be all right uh, all right success uh, there it is you can actually uh, see it right right there and uh, this was kind of a little little tougher but once you get that middle once you get this middle uh, your middle one in right here um, everything just kind of lines up and so this uh, the only thing that remains is the actually the arms here and that should be real easy all right I'm cutting back in and uh, I want to show you something here so this actually came from the derailleur guard which is on um, which is on basically I'll show you here real quick sorry I'm like so full with my hands here uh, yeah there we go so if you look here um, here's the issue the derailleur the guard that's where the screw came from uh, the problem is the screw is like short it's small and I could you know I can show you right here and and see if you compare it with the size of that came in the package so this is what came in the package you could see it's this is a uh, larger than the derailleur guard screw so what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap this out this came from some other part uh, other place uh, I, I think I'm going to put it um, let me see where did it come from uh, so uh, I, I detached from here as you can see and so I'm going to use this the smaller screw to attach here and then I'm going to basically use this longer screw to attach the arm where the derailleur guard is and uh, because uh, I'm just not able to I'm just not able to reach I'm not able to reach the uh, the threads with this smaller screw if you add uh, if you add the uh, the arm and the derailleur guard you see once you add the arm and the derailleur guard that screw is just way too small to to make it work so uh, let me try that and uh, let me get back to you all right success <laughs> so these are the tools that I use from the tool kit uh, man it took a while uh, there it is if you want to see the whole thing uh, uh, I guess you can't here you go well let me just show you here uh, the longer the longer th uh, bolt did make a big difference I'm able to put this on without uh, um, oops I may have to redo this I may have to redo this hold on here I'm gonna have to redo this I'll be right back you can see there's a little you can see it's bent right there you see that Let's see that so in the dark it's kind of hard to see let me be right back all right oh boy fixed it I had that little uh, derailleur uh, was bending on me I can show you right this piece right here was bending uh, I screwed it in with I screwed it in on top of this anyways it's in so the fenders look good let me put some air in it and try to put it into the light so you guys can see it a little bit better and uh, it looks great I might even write it out tonight all right, full fenders complete. This is the best I can do. Um, maybe I'll do uh, another shot during the day so you can get a better idea. It, it did take me a while, mainly because I didn't want to take off the back tire. And uh, it was a pain in the neck. And then uh, since I already have slime in the tube, uh, it's, it's hard to... Uh, it's, uh, it's hard to... Uh, you know it sags a little bit and then have to put it in the air just right and then spin the wheel and all this stuff anyways I got it done uh, here's a full look if you can if you can see I don't know 
my light's not going to do any good. But let's have a close-up view here. So that's what the back fender looks like. Looks really nice. I'm going to have to do uh, another one during the day. I'm just showing you what it looks like during the night, I guess. Uh, anyways, uh, let me let me uh, go in and uh, let, me, let me get a day shot. So I'll, I'll wait until tomorrow and I'll show you what it looks like. It looks it looks awesome. <laughs> it looks awesome, and I'm gonna have fun riding it. And I'm glad I cleaned it today because uh, I don't think I could get underneath those spots, uh, at least the back here. Um, but uh, anyways, it was it was a little challenging. Uh, the screws. The bolts, uh, remember, uh, if you use the one back here, if you use, uh, don't reuse this, this bolt right here that's on the derailleur, it's too small to have this and the derailleur, so you have to use the new bolt. Use, take this bolt and use it right here for this one, and then I think you're everything else is good to go the front was probably the easiest the easiest to do the back one was a little challenging because of that one that one size bolt on the derailleur it's just too small when you take it out so you have to move some of the bolts around uh, other than that uh, it looks good let me uh, let me wait until tomorrow and I'll show you during the day all right everyone here it is during the day it's a lot easier to see and so, uh, as you can see, there's the front fender right there, the rear fender, and uh, I'll tell you what I, <laughs> how I did. The front one's really easy, of course, um, just because it's easily accessible, and it's just simply your... Uh, this is probably the hardest part right here. Uh, other than that, um, that's that's about it. It's You already have the uh, bolt going through there, uh, and then here is the other part right here where you replace uh, you just screw in that's all it is it's just a screw it's just right here on the bottom if you can see that just right here on the bottom and just goes in and here's how it looks looks really good as you can see a lot of a lot of space that's what I like about this one looks like it gives a lot of space um, this one was the toughest here and uh, mainly because, as you know, the um, the derailleur, the bolt for the derailleur uh, is not quite long enough. So, um, hold, hold on here. All right, so let's focus here. So the the uh, this bolt here that originally was here, uh, this is the new one that came in the package. And it was just a little bit longer versus, uh, let's see if I can find it, versus that one. That's the original bolt that was here. Uh, of course, I moved it over, I moved that over, over into here uh, because um, it was just too short. It wouldn't, it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't go all the way. So that's the other issue that I had. Um, what's the other one here? Uh, there is the uh, there is the other bolt right there, which it, it looks looks like it's on pretty good. And then um, of course uh, here, here's the other one. So this is the one that you you basically reuse, so you don't need to use that. I originally thought it would be up here, but it's not. It's just right here. And so this is how it looks. Looks like there's plenty of room. Plenty of room. Plenty of room. So this should be, this should be pretty good. So, so let's take a look at it one more time, the whole thing. All right, all right. Uh, it was a little bit of effort into putting this together. Um, it took me a longer because I had to flatten the tire and get in there with my hands and uh, I just didn't want to take the back wheel off that's that's the thing uh, maybe it would have been faster if I if I did take the back wheel off maybe uh, but I chose not to and it just took a long time to to crank and again I was using tools I was using tools that uh, was available to me by 
rad power bike. So uh, I could have used a, uh, a ratchet. I could have used other tools uh, that made it made the job easier and faster. But I wanted to use the tools that came with it. Other than other than the um, the tool to uh, remove the valve, which that came from the slime um, the slime tire sealant. Other than that, that's the only thing I used to uh, release some air. But I'm sure you people probably could have released the air some other way without the tool it was just a lot of faster um, but uh, releasing the air was uh, a better option for me um, and and maybe a better option for you depends how big your hands are but that took the longest was using that small um, hex wrench by hand and just turning and turning and squeezing squeezing the uh, the rear tire so I can get in there underneath the fender to uh, you know screw on the bolts that was probably the hardest part uh, and that took the longest other than that it's fairly simple and it seems pretty easy uh, of course you know it's easy when, it's easy to say that now but who knows who knows what it might be um, anyways uh, there's a second hole right here which I, I'm not too sure. Let me see if I can show you. There you go. There's a second hole right here, which I'm not too sure what it's for. Um, I don't know if anything's going to come out of there, uh, if I should plug it up or not, but there's an option there. It doesn't seem like there would be enough room to, uh, if you could take a look there, it doesn't seem like there would be enough room to, um, you know, move this thing down further. Um, so I, I don't know what the reasoning behind that is and uh, also another thing um, let me see I'll get over to the, to the garage here um, I'm just gonna grab this here so uh, this is the box that it came in and uh, again this is I got an extra piece this piece is actually for the um, is it for the front or for the Okay, now it's for the, uh, yeah, this is for the front. You can see the angle. So I got an extra front piece, which I, I don't necessarily know why, but uh, I got it. So this is a nice souvenir. I'll just do something with it. I don't know what. Anyways, uh, is it is it worth is it worth the work to do the front fender? I think it is, and I can't wait to ride it out. I think I'm going to get a nice and cleaner ride. Uh, that's why I did wash the bike, and so um, I'm going to really enjoy it. Uh, another thing, not related to the fenders, but uh, I, I have noticed that there is some rubbing going on, wear and tear. You can see this is this wire. You can see this this wire is rubbing right up against here, and you can see where it's rubbing against. Another one is right here. You can see this wire is rubbing against here and a little bit right here. And, and it looks like you're going to get a lot of these wear and tear um, of things here. So, just that. And of course, when I fold the bike, uh, there was some plasti dip here, but it didn't hold up. It's just, you know, it's just literally just ripping apart. And so I'm not, I'm probably going to have to come up with some Velcro or something. Um, I thought plasti dip might, might help, but the good thing about plasti dip is um, there we go you can just simply remove it and you can see the where it's rubbing here on the side uh, the plasti dip here on the bottom however is holding up very well as you can see and so this is holding up good uh, of course it has a lot it has a lot thicker <laughs> it has many many layers of plasti dipping but this is holding up good so I might just use some Velcro and just tie that down a little bit. Uh, same thing here, maybe some Velcro, um, maybe some Velcro, maybe. So anyways, uh, I'm going to conclude this episode. Just wanted to show it during the day and what it looked like. So feel free to like, dislike, uh, leave a comment, or even do a video response. Until next time, everyone, stay tuned. Bye.